Well, hi there, guys. It's great to be with you again. Today, we're going to think a little bit about does God have favourites? Now, I wonder, do you have any favourite things? Do you have, for instance, a favourite food? It's a difficult one, that, isn't it? I like sausages. <clears throat> I also really love chocolate. One of, my, uh, one of the games that me and my family sometimes play is we'll say, what's your favourite main course? Or what's your favourite pudding or dessert? And we will list our favourites and we'll have a conversation about which we think is best and we'll rank them in order. Um, a bit sad, but we enjoy it. Um, do you have a favourite friend? We often call them best friends, don't we? My best friend is Lucy. I've got other friends, very close friends, but Lucy, my wife, she's my best friend. Now, we, we spend time together, we enjoy that, we like talking, but we can quite happily just be quiet, and we just love being together, because we know we love each other and we care for each other. Uh, do you have a favourite mug, one that you go to every time you want a drink, or a glass? I've got a favourite mug, and it's really nice and round. It was my mother-in-law's, um, but when she died, I, in, well, I didn't inherit it, but it came to our house and I've been using it ever since. It's round, it feels really comforting when I, um, when I drink out of it. Favourites are good. Favourites are normal and natural. They're good, though, as long as they're not to the exclusion of everyone or everything else. For instance, you know, I said I love chocolate. Imagine if I said I, my favourite food is chocolate and all I'm going to do is eat chocolate forever. That wouldn't be very healthy, would it? I mean, you might think it's a good thing, but I think that would feel quite poorly quite quickly. Um, or if I said, well, my favourite friend, my best friend is Lucy, so I'll be nice to her, but I will ignore everyone else or be nasty to them. That wouldn't be good, would it? Favourites are good as long as they're not to the exclusion of everyone or everything else. So as I said, I want to talk about a bit about does God have favourites? And I'm going to tell you a story about someone who had found himself pushed out, not being well, he became a follower of Jesus. Now, this story takes place not long after the resurrection. The church is starting to grow as people become followers of Jesus. People to look after specifically the Greek speaking widows and orphans. And one of those people is a guy called Philip. Philip's great. He's very good and very organised, and he really cares for people. And he also is really good at listening to God or listening for what God is wanting to say to him. And one day, I don't know exactly how this worked with him, but one day, Philip heard God saying to him, I want you to go from the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza and wait there because there's someone I want you to meet. So Philip goes and he waits. And then in the distance he sees, well, there's a bit of a procession. There's someone very important coming. And as he looks, someone dressed in very fine clothes, sitting in a lovely chariot with someone driving, he's reading there. And Philip doesn't know this, but this guy is the treasurer for the Queen of Ethiopia. He's a bit like an Ethiopian Rishi Sunak. This guy's reading, and he's reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, where it says in Isaiah, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and like a sheep before his shearers is dumb, quiet, he didn't open his mouth. Now, Philip goes alongside the chariot, and he says to the man, do you understand what you're reading? And the man says, how can I understand if uh, no one tells me what it means? So he says to Philip, come on, jump up on here and explain to me. So using that bit of the Bible, he explains to the Ethiopian all about Jesus. How Jesus came to, take, to, to bring people back into God's family. The Ethiopian, when they got to the um, a place where there was some water, he said... 
what stops me from being baptised? And obviously the answer was nothing, so they got out, the man was baptised, became a follower of Jesus, he headed back to Ethiopia, and Philip was taken elsewhere. And it, there's been a church in Ethiopia for a very, very, very long time, getting on for 2,000 years now, and we don't know this, but maybe that man was instrumental in beginning and starting the church in Ethiopia. Now, in Jesus' day, if you'd asked anyone in Israel, does God have favourites? Well, the answer would have been, well, of course he does. Does he chose us, his people, the Jewish people, for his own possession, for his own people? And so we are chosen by God, we are the special ones, we are God's favourites. What they would have failed to understand, though, was that God said that he chose them so that they could bless everyone in the whole wide world. He chose them basically as his, his ambassadors so that they could tell about, G, uh, about, about God's love and people could be brought into the family. But they didn't get it. And it was only really with Jesus and with the growth of the church that we began to speak about how God loves everyone the whole world and the whole world is welcome. Does God have favourites? Well, God loves everyone. He wants us all to know that we're part of the family. And if we are going to be like God, if we're going to be followers of Jesus, then we have to behave like him. So, do we have favourites? Are there people that we really like and those that we don't like and don't get on with? Well, if we're going to be like God and if we're going to be like Jesus, then we've got to take care of all those around. We can't look, love everyone the same, but we can see when someone is in need or on their own and they need a friend and we can be that friend to them, for them. So it'd be good if we're quiet for a moment. I'm going to say a prayer and then we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Loving God, I thank you that you don't have favourites, that you welcome everyone into their family. All we need to do is say yes to Jesus. We pray that you would help us to be like you, to care for those on the edge, those who don't have friends, those who need help. Help us to be people who welcome people in. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's been great to be with you again today, and I'll see you next time.